MSB here, and it's time for a serious sneak peek at the digital card game Ascension Online. Ascension Online is a digital deck building game from Stoneblade Entertainment that just began its beta test. Now, because this is the beta version, please keep in mind that many elements of Ascension Online will have vast improvements before released. As I mentioned, Ascension Online is the digital version of the Ascension deck building game. A deck building game is different from your standard digital TCG because both players have equal access to all cards in a set. There are no rarities, no opening packs, and no chase cards. Just pure, unadulterated, strategic decision making. As I mentioned, the beta version of Ascension Online has limited features, and what you can do in this version is create a two-player game. So we'll go ahead and run through one game so you can see what a deck building game is all about. Now there are going to be lots of additional expansions that will eventually come around, but for now there's only two available, the original Chronicle of the God Slayer, and then also Return of the Fallen. What we'll do is just set the second player to computer, and right now the only version that's available is easy. But that's okay, we're just going to showcase the game. You also have the ability to change your honor total, which increases or decreases the length of a game. Once you're ready, just hit create game and you're on your way. Okay, Ascension, as I mentioned, is a deck building game. And that means that both players start with the same 10 cards in their deck. Uh, there are 8 apprentices and 2 militia. And each card generates some sort of resource, one of the two resources in the game, which are runes and power. Now, there are also cards that can generate honor, but I'll touch on those later. When you play the cards, you generate those amount of resources into your pool, which can be used for that turn. And you can then choose any card either from the middle deck or from the generic deck, which is here in the middle. Mystic, Heavy Infantry, and the Cultist. So both players take turn uh, recruiting heroes, which are characters that establish some sort of effect. Constructs, which are permanents, which once played, stay in force until your opponent destroys them, usually by means of um, killing off a monster that is a secondary effect. Um, or defeating monsters, which provide you some amount of honor and normally also give you some additional effect. Honor gained from defeating monsters is pulled from the general honor pool here, which shows the 60 value. And that's why I mentioned um, the more honor that there is in a game, the longer the game goes on. So here I'm going to take the Void Initiate, and I'll touch on something very quickly. Um, the Void Initiate here has a, a an ability which you may banish a card in your hand or discard pile. And you may ask, well, why would I want to discard my own cards or banish a card, which is to basically void it? Um, the reason why you want to do that is because you've got these useless 10 cards that you start with that very quickly become outstripped by cards that are just strictly better, like the Mystic compared to the Apprentice. So the faster that you can get rid of those from your deck, the better off you are. And generally speaking with Ascension, you want to try and build up a good rune base as well. So you'll see me spend a few turns uh, picking up Mystics and then not spending my full complement of uh, resources, which are then lost. And any time you recruit a hero or a construct, uh, it goes into your discard pile. And after all of your cards are gone from your deck, your discard pile gets reshuffled into your new deck. So any time that you recruit something, you don't see it until you've gone through all of your cards for that turn. Okay, perfect. And so here, I'll be able to show the banishing. Perfect, and then an Arbiter of a Precipice, which is great. Okay, so I'm going to play out my Void Initiate, and then it shows my discard pile, and I get to choose a card to permanently be banished. I'm going to choose my Militia. That will never come back around again. And then I will play. Now, here I have two options. I could either take uh, the Ascetic of the Lidless Eye, uh, which allows me to draw two cards, or I could take an Arbiter of the Precipice. I'm going to take an Arbiter of the Precipice, because then that also allows me to take another Mystic as well. So that's going to be much better... Um, moving forward. So in addition, you get to see what your opponent takes. Um, at the end of the game, the player with the highest honor total wins. And you gain honor not only from this pool, which shows now 58, which you get from defeating monsters, but every card also at the bottom left here has an honor value. The ascetic of the lidless eye being 2. Every card in your deck gives you the amount of honor shown on the bottom of this card. So you add the amount of honor that you get during the game to the honor that's on all the cards in your deck, 
and that's who wins the game. So here, I'm going to play my Void Initiate. I get to banish a card, I've got none, none in my discard pile. So I'm going to choose my Militia, because I can't do anything with one power anyway. Okay, and then what I will do is, um, I want to take the Temple Librarian, because I want to start speeding through my, uh, my cards, so I can get those banishings happening faster and faster. And I'll take a Heavy Infantry to round it out. So next turn I'll have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that'd be great. I'll be looking to take the Acidic of the Lidless Eye if it's still around. Looks like it is, okay. Perfect, so I'll play this out. I could take the Grand Design, but the Aesthetic of the Lidless Eye is going to help me much more in, in the early game. But you can tell, like, the Grand Design has a six honor at the end, so these mechanic constructs really um, are, are great for that ending honor total. Now I'll use the Arbiter of the Precipice. I draw two cards and I have to banish one, and I'll banish off one of my apprentices. You can see that I still have ten cards in my deck. I'm going to play all these, and I've got a mammoth amount of runes. Now, because we're so early in the game, I'm actually going to go out on a limb and take uh, the Weaver of Stars here. It's not guaranteed that I'll be able to use her power effectively, uh, but it's, it's sort of uh, the best chance that I have right now. Okay. And it looks like my opponent is now going heavy military. So you want to watch which direction your opponent is going during their turn and what cards they acquire. You can generally see when an opponent is trying to rush out a game if they're only buying heavy infantry and trying to reduce that honor total. The game ends when the honor goes down to zero. And then that's when everything is tabulated, the cards in your deck as well as the honor that you've gained during the turn. So here it feels like my opponent is going to rush. So, we're going to Void Initiate, destroy one of my apprentices, draw two cards, discard a card, and draw two more, and then play out my resources. So I'm going to take a Burrower, and a Heavy Infantry, defeat a Cultist, and move on. There are four factions in Ascension. Uh, there's the Lifebound, which you can see here, which generally gives multiple effects, um, and also Lifebound are the only cards that, when played, actually generate honor. There, there'd be a card that just says, gain two honor. Then there's the Enlightens, which generally have lots of card manipulation, card draw, and uh, card discard. Then there's the... Then there's the Void, which uh, has a lot of manipulation and banishing effects, as you've seen with my Void Initiate. And lastly, there's the Mechana, which has uh, lots of high honor totals, and um, and sort of cumulative effects that sort of increase as you gain more and more Makana. Okay, so I'm going to take a Wolf Shaman for the card draw, and then I'm going to take a Heavy Infantry and defeat a Cultist, and leave my one rune power. Um, there are times when you don't want to acquire a card from the center row, even if you could. Because remember, whenever you acquire a card from the center row, a random card fills its place. So you may unwittingly reveal something that is very beneficial to your opponent. So yes, end my turn without that. And let's see what he goes with. Okay. Okay, so he's just, uh... Yep, he's just rushing it out. So we will start to pick up the pace with our side as well. Master of Creation. Uh, banish a card in the center row. Um, I'm going to banish uh, Zeron, Duke of Lies, because I don't want him... Since my deck is getting very efficient, I don't want him to defeat this monster and have him take something that's amazing like that uh, that seven rune hero. So discard that, and then I also get to, to banish a card from my discard pile, get rid of one of my apprentices, and then I'll take this Void Thirster, because that'll give me some um, permanent gain on every turn for, um, for power. Okay, great. Okay, so he's moving pretty quick. Now, what I'll do is use my Arbiter of the Precipice first, and banish off my Apprentice, play out my Void Thirster. Now the way in which you play your cards and use your resources is very important in Ascension. So for example here, while I could decide to use uh, my Cetrum to acquire a hero, like say the Demon Slayer, uh, it, it would be better for me to defeat a monster, gain the benefits of it, and then see what card it reveals to see if perhaps there's some you know, major benefit. There isn't, unfortunately, and I'm just going to play my Void Initiate and cancel. Take the Demon Slayer, see if there's anything else. There isn't, so then I will Cetra to grab the Flytrap Witch. 
I was hoping for some sort of like mammoth amazing um, ooh, mammoth amazing hero, but there wasn't anything. So he's gearing up pretty fast, and let's go ahead and play off our card drawers. Get some card draw, and here we draw a card and gain two honor, and then play out the rest of our guys. Um, so here, what I want to do is uh, take the Sea Tyrant, because that's going to make him only, it's going to reduce him down to one of those uh, constructs. Okay, and two fold Ascara, I'm at, we're at 33 honor, uh, two fold Ascara is going to be really good. So I'm going to take that and one of these Rocket Couriers for the amount of honor it provides. Yep, make him discard a bunch of stuff. So he's down to just the Snapdragon now. Okay, and I really want to get this Muramasa if I can, so we'll see. Um, so I'm going to discard this Burrower to that Corrosive Spider, play the Temple Library. Okay, great. So we will then... Let's go ahead and twofold Ascara, the Temple Librarian, so I get to redraw. Flytrap Witch and draw. Okay, and then play out. Now, I've got six. Okay, so I'm going to take the Earth Tyrant, draw two cards, and hope I get a little more. Okay, I didn't. I was hoping to get two more runes, that so way I could buy the Muramasa, but instead what I'm going to do is um, take the two more infantry, kill Mephit, and then have it banish the Muramasa so my opponent doesn't get it. Uh, it can be very important in a match to make sure that um, your opponent doesn't get some of these great cards. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to take Core the Ferromancer uh, because I don't want my opponent to have it because he's got more than two constructs. Um, so I'll go ahead and pull that one out of him. And so that's the thing. You, you generally watch your opponent, see what they're doing, see what strategy they're... Um, if they're playing a long game or a short game, uh, remember generally the cards that they've been picking, and then you not only try to pick to increase the power of your deck, but then you also pick to make sure that your opponent doesn't start getting amazing cards. Okay. Burrower and draw, draw. And this is where um, knowing um, when to play your cards is important. Um, the order in which they are played. So now I'll ditch the Apprentice. Um, and then I will Arbiter of the Precipice and discard that. Play my Rocket Courier. Now here what I'll do is play my Cetra and take Master Dartha with it and see what that generates. Um, and then I'm going to take a Spike Vixen and an Ara Templar because that gives me more honor points and we're nearing the end of the game here. And then play out my Semel's Trickster. And then cut that and be done. The Shadow Star was a sort of an unfortunate reveal, but at least it wasn't a Mechanic Construct. Okay, just like he's done here. See, it's a great thing that I didn't pick up that one cost troop because it revealed a gra the Grand Design, which has a six honor cost, which I will definitely be taking. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. And now here I'm going to Temple Librarian and discard uh, the Apprentice here. And let's see, let's draw another card. And draw another card. Whew, I'm getting some great pulls. So take the Landwalker. Okay, so here I'm going to use my Arbiter of the Precipice. A bit risky, uh, but I'm happy to discard one of my heavy infantry uh, to try to pull this, the Void Initiate, and uh, drop the Apprentice, because that gives me the six runes I need um, to, uh, to get the Grand Design here. Uh, and I will put that in play, yes, thank you. And then three for Shadow Star, which is great. Um, and then I'm going to have a, a boatload of, of power. So I'm going to kill this Tyrant which gets me a Flytrap Witch. And then the choice between the Wind Tyrant or the Corrosive Widow. Uh, I'm going to take the Wind Tyrant because that takes me right to the edge and then I also get my Watchmaker's Altar. Wow, I'm getting crazy cards here. Um, and then we're down to one honor. I don't want to reveal anything else just in case. Uh, the Hedron Cannon is worse enough. And uh, I'll let my opponent have the go.
Okay, and since my opponent finished off the honor, that means I get one more turn. Uh, so we have equal amounts of turns. Play my Core the Ferromancer and get that extra card. Ooh, and that just opened up a world of pain for my opponent. So Master Dartha, and then I can twofold Ascara, my Master Dartha, to pull a whole bunch more cards. And here, then I will Arbiter of the Precipice, ditch my Apprentice. Ooh, this is brutal for my opponent. Wolf Shaman, uh, I will Arthur Templar, the Corrosive Widow, uh, because the uh, the Corrosive Widow was uh, power four or less, defeating. And uh, then, gosh, I'm, I've just basically got my pick. Uh, I'm gonna take the Burrower, put it in play, and draw another card from it. Uh, and so once your deck gets up and running like this one, uh, it is ridiculous. You get some amazing power pulls. So I will take the Sea Tyrant. And then I'm going to Temple Librarian. Ditch my Heavy, heavy Infantry because I don't really need that. Draw from the Spike Vixen. Do I have anyone who's really good? Yes, Ozaya the Peerless. I'll use Cetra on that. Um, so, in, in here you can see... Per oh, fantastic. Um, so now I have the seven power needed for uh, defeating the Avatar of the Fallen. This is sort of like the big baddie of the first set. Uh, he's unbanishable, so if you get one of those cards that can banish something from the center row, you can't use it on him. And you can acquire or defeat any card in the center row without paying its cost when you get him. So now I'm just going to go fishing. Um, I've got an insane amount of resources. I'm using the last turn, so I'm going to start to pick up all of these one-cost cards uh, because they're just going to beef up my deck uh, immeasurably. And yeah, two cost card there, we'll play another Mystic, draw another two. Uh, what I'm trying to do is just get something that's you know really good uh, to fall out. What do I have left? Okay, so I'll, I'll spend the three to get the three here and spend the four to get the Avatar Golem. Okay, so nothing extraordinarily great um, dropped from all of that fishing. Uh, but I have absolutely trounced my opponent. Um, I'll just go ahead and the highest thing on the board is a mistake of creation to give me another four honor. So I'll just pop that off and cancel that. And I don't need to um, to banish anything from my hand. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a crushing victory. And end my turn. So yeah, 133 honor total to 78. So uh, almost doubled my opponent's honor. Uh, I just had a really good rune base and then um, picked up a couple early game cards like Cetra uh, that just really allowed me to, to pull ahead very quickly. The, the best part about Ascension is there are lots of expansions um, in the paper version of the card game. And those are going to be transported over to uh, Ascension Online as well. So you're only seeing the most basic or fundamental of mechanics. Uh, there are lots of complexities in the future sets. Um, and it's really fun to, to sort of get down into combined sets where you're playing with two or three or four of these sets at, at once and knowing how to balance the different types of card effects and again watching your opponent seeing what they do and then reacting to it uh, in order to overcome the deck that they're creating with a far superior deck as was the case for this victory. Excellent. In addition, this is the beta version of Ascension Online, and Stoneblade have already said that they're going to be adding uh, a full single-player campaign, so you can do these matches solo, which are sort of like challenge matches, and there's also going to be level-based advancement for your deck. You're going to unlock new cards and new powers uh, that you can use in the single-player campaign. And there's also going to be online tournaments. So there's going to be casual PvP as well as the online tournaments, which will have prizes as well. So there's going to be a very robust system in Ascension Online to do lots of different things. If you just feel like popping in for a quick game, you can just you know, do a quick match against an opponent or the AI. You can jump into the single player campaign and unlock some additional levels and some additional powers. There's going to be tons to do, and, and the base game of Ascension as a deck building game is just a fantastic foundation that they're going to be building off of. So be sure to head over to ascensiongame.com for more information on Ascension Online. And also, of course, if you enjoyed this video, please take the time to subscribe and click the like button. As always, I'm MSB, wishing you good games and good times.